Alright people, we are back with another Fake Card Friday. And yes, yes it is, it's another Light Sonic Sea Monster. If Minerva wasn't enough, this person decided to actually make another Light Sonic Sea Monster. So we're gonna go ahead and look at this card and of course compare it to Minerva because you can't say Light Storm without saying Minerva and all of them uh, perform age. So let's see if this card was actually real, would it have a place in the deck? So this is Zard the Radiant Light Storm. He is a Light Warrior XC Effect Monster, rank 4. 2500 attack with 2000 defense. That's our average. Not bad. You know, just right at the attack barrier. Not bad. Uh, made with three level four monsters. Of course, it has to be generic. So uh, it needs one more um, level four monster than Minerva does. But, you know, that's pretty simple when you can just be like, all right, summon, summon, summon that hat tricker and just go off with your performer pals as well. You know, maybe if it wasn't generic, maybe it was like three level four light swan monsters. Then maybe we'd be like, no, 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 that's too much, it's too much. But, you know, with how uh, Perform Ages are being thrown in with the Light Swarms and just spamming out Minerva, like, you know, it's literally a 99 cent card. Oh, wait, it's like a 2000 plus dollar card. Uh, um, this person decided to go ahead and make a fake card to uh, just tag team with Minerva for just even more uh, Light Swarm Perform Mage shenanigans. So let's look at the effect and determine whether you should run. Uh, Minerva over this, or run this over Minerva, or you should just run a combination of both. So, the fair creeds. Once per turn, you can attach X, X, you can attach an Xtreme Material from this card. Oh my god, I have such a hard time saying that. Hello? Uh, send the top four cards of your deck to the graveyard and apply the following effects depending on the number of Light Sworn cards sent to the graveyard by this effect. So, of course, Minerva attached Xtreme Material, uh, mills the top three, and for every Light Sworn that you milled, you get to draw a card. This mills the top four, and you get effects depending on how many Light Sworns you milled. So, of course, if you mill as many as top requirements, then you get all three effects, because you can clearly see this thing has uh, three effects. But uh, this seems pretty good to me, so let's go ahead and look at these effects individually, and I determine whether you want to go ahead and just bust out that Minerva and keep Minerva going, or is this guy actually worth the effort? So, if you mill one Light Sworn, you can target and destroy one card on the field. Alright, so of course Minerva, that's her destruction effect. When she's destroyed, uh, she pretty much mills the top three, and for every Light Sworn you mill, you get to go ahead and pop a card on the field. Which is actually pretty good, it activates during damage step, it's really hard to avoid. Uh, and it's just one of the main reasons why you don't want to just off Minerva, because, you know, she, there's a chance, there's a lucky chance that they're going to go ahead and mill some Light Sworns and end up popping you or you, some of your cards just because you just happen to kill her and like I said she goes off during the damage step and when she goes off during the damage step it's really hard to stop things that go off during the damage step like that you know it's either you solemn notice her when she hits the grave or you know you uh <laughs> you soul drain her there's not a lot of things there's not a lot of things that I can stop her when she hits the grave so uh, this card is just literally uh attached <laughs> you attach some material mill four uh you know there's a pretty good chance that you will go ahead and mill one so you mill one you could just go ahead and pop a card on the field not bad, especially for just being a 25 beater. Uh, but if you mill two more, and remember that you get all these effects, you get you don't you don't get to apply you don't choose one, you get all of them as long as you reach the requirement. So uh, two or more, you discard a card and then you draw two. Yeah, that's pretty good as well. Of course, uh, light swans generally like to uh, you know put the light swans in the grave, so that's no problem. And you know, discarding one, drawing two. Sounds like a plus one to me, you know. Who doesn't want to discard one card, draw two, right? <laughs> yeah. And it's not like uh, you're really nagging on the play, you know. It's not, you know, like, even even now, if you, of course, consider uh, what it takes to make this, uh, if you take that out of the consideration, this is just straight up a plus one. So, you know, that's just uh, uh, just bonus on top of the cake as well. But we are not done because if you mill three Light Swords, three out of the four cards, you mill the top deck, if they are Light Swords, your opponent cannot special summon non-light monsters until the end of your next turn. Yeah, so if it just happens to be that you're not running a deck that runs lights, you know, any deck that runs non-lights, yeah, you, you're pretty much screwed until the end of your opponent's, until the end of your next turn, which means that pretty much you mill three for till this turn, till the end of your turn, your opponent's turn, until the end of your next turn. Uh, your opponent, just your opponent, you you can still go ahead, summon all the non-lights you want, you want to summon the hat trigger, whatever, fine, it's just your opponent cannot special summon non-light monsters, yeah, that that's fair, that that's fair, uh, it just seems like so disgusting, it's, all these, these these three effects seem very powerful, for such how luck based it is, to just to mill off three, the top four cards of your deck, and even if you happen to mill some 
you know, some damage jugglers or some uh, trick clowns. Hey, it doesn't matter. You don't care anyway because that's just how the deck runs. He just wants to mill a whole bunch and, and sack you with Minerva and drop the rank four. So uh, adding this to the arsenal doesn't seem bad. But just like Minerva, uh, it just happens to have an effect. Uh, when it gets killed and sent to the graveyard. So, uh, similar to how Minerva, when she uh, sent to the graveyard, she's still had in the middle of the top three, and you can go ahead and uh, pop cards on the field equal to the number of light soul monsters that you uh, milled. This monster also has an effect, and it's just it's just a little bit more where you're just going to be like, eh, I don't want to deal with this. So, if this card with XC materials is sent to the graveyard, you can add one Judgment Dragon from your deck or graveyard to your hand. You can only use this effect of Zard the Radiant Light Sworn once per turn. Yes, people. If you happen to send this to the graveyard, and it doesn't even say, you know, if your opponent sends this to the graveyard or if this card is destroyed. No, if it's if it's sent to the graveyard, period. So you could literally, if you have this and you send it to the graveyard yourself, you can add one Judgment Dragon from your deck or graveyard to your hand. Now, from what I've been seeing, the, the Light Swarm Performance Engine doesn't really run Judgment Dragon, but if this card is it, I mean, that would be sure a good ass incentive to run it. Uh, I was always kind of frowned upon when that uh, that trap card first came out. I was like, hey, you know, if you mill this with a with a light sworn effect, then you get to go ahead and add judgment. And I'm just thankful that it actually says a light sworn monster effect because, of course, majority of the time, how are you going to be milling your deck? Generally, besides me, you're probably going to be milling through solar recharge and charge of light and they don't count. And if you draw the trap card, it's kind of dead. I mean, it has that cute effect where it's like, hey, you can activate it and put it on top of your deck and hopefully uh, mill it with a light sworn effect so you can get that JD. But uh, despite it being uh, fairly decent on um, paper, or on cardboard in this instance, uh, the card never really gained popularity in Light Swords, just kind of fell out of favor. They were, they, were, they were there for like that one moment, that, that one moment, and it just kind of fell off when uh, when the Dragon Rulers went, because of course it was like Equip Swiping with the Dragon Rulers, and you know, the Light Swords getting that JD, and then they kind of just fell off, and they really haven't done much since, you know. Uh, Light Swords seems like they, they get like this one little niche thing that they can they can attach onto, and they fall out of favor. Oh, and you grab onto it, and fall out of favor. Now, uh, can you really call this whole, uh, you know, Light Swarm Perform Mage deck, you know, really up there, top tier? I can't, I can't, you can't put it on there. Because when you look at, you know, what's tier 1, what's tier 2, you also have to consider uh, the ratio at which the deck is being played. Now, I'm sorry, the deck runs 2 to 3 Minerva. There's not a lot of people I know that have 2 to 3 Minerva, 2 to 3 YCS prize cards going for like $2,000 plus. And it's probably like maybe like a group of people who each won one and they want to put the deck together. But, you know, majority of the time you're just going to be seeing this on, you know, Rated Duels on DN or Death Pro or something. But, you know, you're not going to be seeing that at a regional or YCS, that deck. So it's really hard to gauge how well that deck does. I've seen this deck do, uh, do a plenty of things, but, uh, you know, it's, you just really can't really put a tear to this deck just because Minerva is the focus and she is very, 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 very hard to obtain. So, uh, you know, it's the question, like, what would this guy be? You know, would he just be another YCS prize card? Or would he just be, you know, a simple ultra or secret rare thrown in a set? I don't know. But, uh, you know, just the fact that uh, if this card really existed and if you could pull this off, I, th I think there might be enough incentive, uh, just how powerful it is, to uh, maybe run a couple more lights ones that definitely uh, run the performage engine. And, uh... Throw that Judgment Dragon in, because once again, if this guy with the Ximitar sent to Graveyard, you get that Judgment Dragon from your deck or Graveyard. Uh, unlike the Trap card, where it's only from your deck, so if you don't got any more JDs in your deck, they're all in the Graveyard. I mean, sorry, that, the, the Trap card's deck, this will get you that JD as long as all your JDs aren't banished. Uh, it will get you a JD from your deck or Graveyard, which is just really, really great. So, uh, personally, I think I think this person, you know, took it a little bit too far. Uh, a lot of people <laughs> below are just saying, like, you know, Light Sun's already scary with Minerva around. Why do you want to make them stronger? And the person's just like, hey, you know what? Screw it. I can make whatever I want with fake cards. Hey, more power to you. It's just, it's just kind of interesting that, you know, you can clearly see that Minerva is already that card. And you just want to give them another card and just, you know, put even more icing on the cake. You know, it's just, it's just even more. So... Uh, tell me what you guys think about Zard in the comment section below. Um, looking forward to seeing what you guys think. And if this card really exists, do you think that the you know the the Light Swarm Performer Perform Age deck? Do you think they would actually run it? And how many? Maybe one? Probably probably just one. Just tech one. And if you can pull it off and pull off its effects, sure, why not? Because the power is pretty good. And you know maybe they would throw a Dragon Dragon in because. Uh, 
Uh, he's good without the Judgment Dragon Search. The Judgment Dragon Search is just the uh, cherry on top of this Zard uh, cake here. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this episode of Fake Card Friday. Of course, I'll be back next Friday with another Fake Card to look at. So thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support. And I will see you guys next Friday with another Fake Card to look at. All right, people. Thanks for watching.